Okay, grab a little Ikea seat for my kids' play area. Set this thing up. Oh yeah, I'm sitting in a little kid's seat. How is this? Um, let's move it down just a little bit. There we go, is that better on my face? It is. All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm in the middle of packing, I'm leaving tomorrow. By the time you guys see this, it might be the same day. But I'm in the middle of packing for a trip to Denver. And <clears throat> today is, uh, this video is kind of that pivot. I do a lot of these videos where I show up my porch and I talk, and there's gonna be a little bit of a transition away from that. Um, so I've just been doing gear stuff. And so today's video is gonna cover A, what's in my bag, B, why I picked what I did, and C, what I learned from gas. And I think I'm gonna go in a backwards order to kind of explain it to you guys. Okay, the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is what I learned from all this gas. As you guys know, I've spent the last, I don't know, year, maybe two years, if you consider the other channel I had, um, talking about gas, different gear. I've owned probably upwards of 45 cameras, maybe 50 cameras at this point, some of them multiple times. Bought some, sold some, lost money, made money, some I returned, whatever it might be, but um, I've learned a lot. And, and uh, I'll tell you just some recent experiences that kind of solidified where I was or where I am and what got me to that point. So first, what I learned from gas. And to kind of summarize it up, I wanna bring two instances really recently that kind of uh, made me realize exactly where I'm at. And I've talked about this. First is when I traveled to Turnip Rock. If you guys remember that video, uh, if I remember to do it, I'll link it up here. I uh, brought my Lumix S5 at the time, and then I had my Ricoh GR, and I had my Sony ZV-1, the camera recording you on right now. And during that time, um, I, I just remember my whole time thinking to myself, I don't need this S5. I'm in the middle of a kayak. I got this camera around my neck. I have nowhere to put it, because I don't want to put it down in the cubby hole. It's kind of wet down there. And I just thought, this thing's cumbersome. And I really wish, in hindsight, I would have just shot the photos I had on the ZV-1 or the Ricoh GR. Um, but that wasn't the case. Second one was the Leica M8 that I had with the uh, Voigtlander 40 millimeter knockdown on it. I had that up north and that lens is super tiny and the M8's not really that big of a camera. I really, really enjoyed carrying that camera around. It wasn't burdensome at all whatsoever. Uh, and even though I ended up selling the camera for other reasons, that was a really enjoyable experience. And then last but not least, last weekend I was in Cincinnati and I brought my Z5. Um, I had, I had, and I also brought my GR. And of the whole weekend, I took four shots on the Z5. Um, and again, mainly it's because it's just too much to bring around. I had the GR in my pocket. I brought it with me to the Cincinnati Reds baseball game. Ended up getting some shots. And it's really, I mean, it was so obvious for me that having the freedom to put my pocket, live in the moment, enjoy the time with my kids and my wife, take the pictures, um, and get good image quality out of it and be happy with it was way, way more important than the superior image quality I would have gotten from the Z5 or whatever it might have been. And so the constant theme that's been around ever since I've been doing this is that size is the most important factor for me because I live a pretty active lifestyle as a dad and a mom and I work and I don't have time to sling a big camera on my neck, hold a baby, all the different stuff. And it's more important to capture the moments than it is to have the most superior gear over my neck. Now, some of you guys, that might not matter. Um, it might not be important for you guys as a professional photographer, and I get that. I'm not talking to you, this is a different use case. Um, but for me, that was the most important for sure by a long shot. Uh, and so, long story short, I said, hey, you know what, I'm done uh, for the most part with this gear stuff. I'm, I'm gonna focus more on uh, the, the, the photography stories and size is the number one most important thing for me. In fact, if you walked around my house upstairs, I think 95% of the pictures hung on the wall are off of micro four thirds or small APS-C cameras because they were with me. They're not the best technically, and you can tell I've changed my photography style a lot since then, but technically they're not the best, but they capture the moment because they are with me. Um, and, and, and in saying that, you know, your phone's always with you, but that's a good backup. I just enjoy the experience of clinching onto an actual camera. So anyways, that's what I learned from gas through all of this. And I'm calling this the pivot because this channel is pivoting. Um, it's gonna start after this video with you guys. So that's number one, was the whole gas thing. Okay, number two, uh, I guess going in backwards order, is um, let's talk about what I am packing in my bag. And I'll start with the main camera. Um, debated on this quite a bit. 
But ultimately, because of what I just told you about what I realized through all the gas and kind of how I identify um, what's important to me as a photographer or somebody who just is kind of documenting my life, if you will, I'm not really technically a photographer, I'm a hobbyist. Um, I ended up uh, just telling myself not to worry about the garbage and the noise and to focus in on the camera that suits my needs the most. And so um, from a interchangeable lens camera perspective, I ended up going back to this bad boy right here. This right here is the Olympus EM5 Mark III. And so uh, if you were with me in the beginning when I was originally shooting Micro Four Thirds, I went all over the place to APS-C Fuji and, and full frame Canon and full frame Nikon and Leica. I'm going back to Olympus um, and I'm not gonna be changing camera systems for at least six months. Um, in fact, I've blocked myself from doing any of that stuff because this camera in complement with the other two that I have, is sufficient. Um, I went on Olympus Passion Magazine, I've gone to other professionals, and they're putting out incredible images that I would be very happy if I was making. And so it's clearly me, the photographer, need to learn technique and need to getting into scenarios where I can make great images as opposed to blaming it on the gear. And I'm being honest with you, I'm being totally just straightforward. The whole gear thing is easy for clicks. I mean, YouTube's a search engine, right? I mean, people go in and say, ooh, the new Nikon Z9 that's coming out, like what's up with that? And that's an easy way for me and other, other people that do this to get clicks because it's the hot trending item, hot trending thing. And frankly, it's lazy. I don't have to get out of my house. I don't have to put hiking boots on. I don't have to engage with people to take portraits or take landscape photography. I can just go rock around the house, shoot some video, shoot some pictures, and talk about my experience with them, which in reality, I'm not using the gear long enough to really become like intimate with it, if you will. Um, so in saying that, uh, I kind of hate my own channel, to be honest with you. And so that's why I really wanna pivot this, this, this channel to more of come with me photo stories and, and watch me learn and, and support that. And I, this camera, the Micro Four Thirds system really does offer everything I need um, to do that. I mean, the image quality is good enough uh, there's no excuse based on some of the other images I've seen from other photographers. I can parse this this system down into something really small with some pancake lenses, or if I want something that's more ergonomically beneficial, I can I can grab EM1 Mark III or G9 or, or EM1X and put some big lenses on it. And even if Micro Four Thirds died today, the the lens lineup is flushed out. I'm never going to be wanting in the lens lineup for something I don't, I, I can't get. So I'm not concerned about that. And in fact, with the rumors of the new sensor coming out for the the uh, G6, um, GH6, sorry, for Lumix, I wouldn't be surprised to see an EM1 Mark IV or EM1X Mark II or EM5 Mark IV that has the new sensor technology that will just continue to bring this up to the next level. And, and last but not least, the advancements in, in noise reduction with DX, DXL Prime whatever it might be. Um, I don't even worry about shooting 6,400, even 12,800 in some cases, uh, if, you, if you kind of expose right, and, and fixing that with, with some of those technologies. Um, I've gone back and forth. People that talk to me know that this has uh, been a constant battle, and I, I, I always switch away from Micro Four Thirds because of FOMO. Oh, bigger sensor, whatever, bigger glass. And yeah, the optical uh, advantages are there for sure. But in saying that, I don't, I don't shoot them. And if I don't shoot them, what's the point? And gear is just robbing me from the uh, opportunity to learn. Even though I love it, I love opening a new box and setting it up, it's robbing me from the opportunity to learn. And so in saying that, um, to everybody that's been here since the beginning, I'm back to Olympus, back to Micro Four Thirds. I'm gonna be shooting this for, uh, for a while. And um, I'll be focusing more on the photo stories and how I'm learning as a photographer. Okay, so. Not to drag this video out, I know it's a lot of talking. I wanna go through what my kit is for my trip coming up. I have most of the gear here, a couple things I don't. But as you guys know, I picked up the silver EM5 Mark III. So that is the camera I'm gonna be using. And I got it with the uh, 12 to 45 kit lens, the F4 lens. This lens is small, it's weather sealed, it's pro body, um, it's metal. And the optics on it are pretty incredible. Uh, really, really sharp. It can focus really, really close. And for the trip I'm going on, it's gonna be mostly landscape type photography. And so it being F4 is actually uh, not a problem. And, and that's one of the advantages of Micro Four Thirds in landscape a little bit is that you can shoot F4 from an exposure standpoint, but get that F8 depth of field. So uh, I think this plus the IBIS, 
Um, plus, if I want to shoot high-res mode on a tripod, I can do that. This setup will probably be taking a majority of the pictures. EM5 Mark III, 12 to 45 Pro that came with it, good kit lens. Um, so yeah. Now, in addition, which I don't have in front of me, um, but the three other lenses I'm bringing along with me are the 25-1.8. I'm a 50 millimeter equivalent shooter, so if I need something a little more low light, a little more compact even than this 12 to 45, I do have the 25-1.8. Um, and I also am bringing the 45-1.8. Those, both those lenses are super small, compact, tiny, and they t uh, put out real good image quality and they're at 1.8 aperture, so the, uh, the, it lets enough light in to kind of compensate for any dark scenarios I might run into. Part of my trip includes a trip to Red Rocks to see a concert, and so I, if I can get this camera in with a 40, 45 or a 25, I plan to take some pictures with this camera set up at that concert. So from the lens lineup, 12 to 45, 25, 1, 8, 45, 1, 1, 8, and then I'm also bringing the Plastic Fantastic 40 to 150, little cheap kit lens. You guys remember from a long time ago, I reviewed that lens. Sorry, I'm burping. I reviewed that lens and I was actually really surprised. I'm not gonna say it's corner to corner sharp and it's not like the 40 to 150 Pro, but for 100 bucks or whatever you can get it for used, uh, it's a really, really good value. And so as part of the trip, as I'm going to Mount Evans in Denver, there's a potential to have mountain goats and other things there. And I don't know if 90 millimeters is gonna be enough to reach where I need to be. And so having that 300 millimeter equivalent reach, I think will be important. And I'm excited to show you guys what those images look like. I sus suspect I'll use mostly the 12 to 45 and the 40 to 150 on that um, drive up Mount Evans. So that's that camera gear. The other piece of camera gear I'm bringing with me in case I can't get that camera, the EM5, into the concert and other things is this, this GR. Um, you guys know I've talked about this. I compared it to the GR3, I think, last week. And what I bought this camera for, it's worth five times that. I mean, uh, I think I paid 250 for it or 225 from KEH used. It had like a thousand on the shutter count. I carry this camera everywhere. I absolutely love it. And as I'm talking to you guys, I'll put up some images right now from that Cincinnati baseball game um, that hopefully kind of give you an idea of just, you know, what I like to do with it. These are all black and white, straight out of camera JPEGs. I didn't edit them, not at all. Uh, enjoy. Okay. Next up is the camera I've owned the longest out of any of them. And I don't ever talk about it on this channel. It is my DJI Osmo Action. I've had this thing forever. Um, and this, this little thing's just awesome. I mean, it's weatherproof, it takes a beating. Uh, it's got the front-facing screen so I can see myself. And I do have connected into it, um, I think it's Synova that makes this little adapter right here. So I can put the microphone into it and actually use it for, for audio. And I, I don't know how I'm gonna use this yet. I might clip it onto my backpack. Uh, so yeah, the, the DJI Osmo, Osmo Action. Now for uh, recording and for tripods and that kind of stuff, I'm bringing two tripods. One is this little Manfrotto Pixie. I think a lot of people have seen this. Um, this thing's great for just low, the low down um, angles or for kind of vlogging and holding it out there. So I use it for that. And the other tripod I have, you guys don't see this ever on the channel either, is this guy right here. This is a uh, Benro travel tripod. I don't know the model number. If it has it on there, the GA169T, it's aluminum. Um, got this from somebody who recommended it. I know nothing about tripods. He said, hey, get this one. It's a good one. There's on sale. Um, and I've loved it ever since. The only thing I don't like about it is this little plate right here. It clicks into it. I think this is Arca Swiss. Um, and as I carry around this EM5, I'm going to put the capture plate on it to carry it in my capture clip. And I think that capture clip also fits into the top of this tripod, which brings me to the next point. Um, I'm going to carry most of the time on, <laughs> ironic, I'm going to carry most of the time um, while I'm out with the backpack on and the capture clip. This is the version one. I didn't see the need to upgrade to the newest version. So I'll have that on most of the time. And then I also, uh, this is the backpack I'm using. I don't think this is the best backpack for someone who's gonna be a hiker or whatever it might be. But this is that brevity bag. And the reason why I like this is because I said I am, I am a working professional. So I throw my camera gear in here. I can get a lot of stuff in here, especially micro four th third stuff and get my little point and shoot cameras in there. But on top it has a little compartment here to put a sweatshirt or a hoodie or some stuff, a little tabletop if you will. And then I can slide back here my, my uh, tablet and my laptop for work stuff. So it works really, really well. I can stuff my tripod in the side here, um, which is what I'll, I'll do. 
and uh, it gives you side access to the camera if you don't want to bust it open. Um, it's not weatherproof. Um, ideally, you'd want the access on the back of the bag so that when you set it down, you're not getting your back all dirty. But for what it is, this works pretty good. And it also has the little thing here, if you guys can see this, to put on your suitcase as you're rolling it through the airport. So this bag I got for like 100 bucks, and it does the job for what I need. And I'll be using this brevity bag um, for the time being. We'll see microphones. I'll be bringing the Rode Wireless Go, the first version set up. I don't have version two yet. Um, I'll also be bringing this right here. What is this guy? The Mini or Micro or whatever this Rode mic is. Um, I can't find the wind muffs for this. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use this up on top of Mount Evans because it's going to be really windy. I might have to resort to this. And then for filming most of the video, outside of the, the DJI Osmo action stuff, is going to be this camera right here, which is filming me now. This is the Sony ZV-1. Um, from a pocket perspective and image quality perspective, for something this small and autofocus, it can't be beat. Where it kind of sucks is stabilization, and I really wanted to just shoot everything on the EM5 because the stabilization is great on it. But then I'll be trying to like film myself, maybe some B-roll, vlog on it, and take pictures, and I just figured uh, having a dedicated video camera and having a dedicated photos camera is probably the better way to go. Um, so yeah, guys, that's it. I'm, I'm pivoting this channel away from um, as much gear. I will talk about the advantages or disadvantages from Micro Four Thirds on my trip and what I experienced and what works real well and what doesn't work real well. I will talk about that stuff. But you're gonna start seeing me do more of these like photo stories, photo vlogs, uh, and focus more on things I learned and technique versus, oh, I got the newest camera. Um, I'm, I'm kind of bored with myself on that and I'm, I'm pivoting away. Uh, so. Thanks for watching. If you're still here, watch this lengthy video of me talking. Thank you. I know this isn't interesting, but I'm heading out on the plane tomorrow in Denver, and I'm really looking forward to this. When I come back, I go up to the UP of Michigan, Upper Peninsula. I'm going to photograph a waterfall that I, I, uh, I uh, took before, and I didn't know what I was doing, so I want to take that picture again. And then there's some other trips planned, and everything goes according to plan. I'm going to Hawaii in October. Uh, there's stuff coming up. And so I'm going to bring you guys along for that. I'm excited to do that. Kind of like I did in that Turn Up Rock video. More of that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. I have a work meeting in five minutes. So I was kind of just doing this on lunch break. Hope you guys enjoy. And uh, yeah, back to Micro Four Thirds. I won't buy a new camera for at least through, uh, through Christmas. Minimum. Minimum. So, all right, guys. See ya. Have a good day.